Hello, and welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Honer and Mark Friedel from Chempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, and our first story today, and I believe it did come out today, was from the American Chemistry Council. They have their monthly index of US specialty chemicals market. And similar to May, the volumes rose a little more than half a percent again for the month of June. Uh, they continue to increase. Specialty chemical volumes are now up over 11% for the year on a year over year basis. Um, things continue to be very, very strong in our industry. And uh, I think in the, the understatement of the year award goes to the uh, author of this article as they said, if economic recovery continues, 2021 should be a good year for specialty chemicals. <laughs> Yeah, boy, that's uh, it's kind of an obvious one. Um, so they, they didn't really go out on a limb there. Not at all. All right, so let's dive into the next story about um, U.S. housing construction. So at least on the construction side of the equation, things are very strong. Um, but it just like most other industries, supply disruptions, um, strong demand for homes has created shortages in building materials and also a tight labor market. Um, and as everybody who's listening knows, there was that Gulf freeze in February, uh, but that hit uh, areas within the construction market pretty hard, such as PVC, which is used to make pipes, window frames, vinyl siding, things like that on a house. Um, some other chemicals used to make carpet, foam for furniture, plastic for appliances, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, um, so clearly the construction side is very hot, but, you know, articles just re released today talk about the sales side of that equation have slowed significantly, um, as well as new housing permits. So it seems like that market is in flux right now. Uh, the builders were scrambling to get enough materials to, to build the homes, but now I think the struggle is gonna be actually selling that inventory that's now on the market. Yep, for sure. And in a, somewhat of a similar story, we, we've always talked about um, acquisitions and investment in other companies. Um, this next story really talks about investment in existing business and specific to equipment and software. Uh, the forecast is investment in equipment and software for, for 2021 is expected to be over 13%, uh, which is higher than GDP. Uh, GDP continues to be at very elevated levels. I think the last we saw was 5.3%. Uh, but this article that is talking about this investment is indicating Q3 GDP on an annual rate to be somewhere closer to 6%, uh, which is which is pretty pretty incredible. Obviously, there's a lot of factors that play into that. And to really see if this is going to be sustained, this high high rates of inflation will will be determined. And some of that also goes back to some of the federal support and other measures which people are planning or the feds are planning to scale back a bit. Yeah, I mean, there was such a drastic shift. Companies trying to find new ways to do things with either less resources, less people. So the software and, and equipment piece makes a ton of sense that it would be elevated. Yeah, for sure. And obviously companies in our industry are are benefiting tremendously uh, this year. I think we saw Dow Chemicals earnings release last week. And you know, as expected, they were they were phenomenal. I think uh, 60 plus percent growth. Obviously, uh, Q2 of last year was very depressed, so we expected them to be strong. But man, that's those results were pretty incredible. Yeah, continues to be really strong earnings. All right, let's talk about the oil field. So it's been a pretty drastic change. You know, when you look last year uh, when oil was basically in negative territory, um, now there's a significant number of jobs added, you know, 
um, for U.S., specifically U.S. oil field services and equipment companies added thousands of jobs in June alone. Um, to be exact, it was around 8,000. Um, so oil producers continue to bring more rigs online to meet recovering demand. And the number of drilling rigs jumped by seven this week to 491. Um, a year ago, that number was 251. So you're almost double um, on a year over year basis. Yeah, it was interesting to see oil. I, I can't remember which day it was, uh, Monday or Tuesday of last week, took a very dramatic plunge um, as uh, you know, increased cases of the coronavirus have started to creep back in. But they have since recovered fairly well, almost back to where they were. Yeah. Um, last I checked, they were kind of in the low 70s the price for a barrel of oil. All right, and finally, in some of the macro um, economic articles and stories, uh, rail car traffic um, continues to rebound nicely. Um, uh, but it is down a little bit on the four week moving average. So it is down down a little bit. Um, but it is up, obviously, compared to the the pandemic levels that we saw in, in 2020. Not quite back to where it was in 2019, but almost. Yeah, that one's stubbornly uh, stuck. It, it's having a hard time getting past 2019. All right, let's talk about new product introductions and company announcements. So the first story here um, is addressing uh, some issues with uh, propylene. Well, not really issues. It's just uh, a pretty cool new technology. Um, so uh, the University of Mich Michigan has actually come up with a new catalyst um, that might help us dig out of the uh, short shortness in supply, uh, at least on one of the plas plastic uh, products. Um, so they've developed a new catalyst for propylene where you use natural gas, you create propylene from that natural gas, and uh, the new catalyst is a whopping 10x uh, more efficient. So you use, um, you, you can produce 10 times the amount of propylene with the same amount of catalyst, and even further, it lasts 10 times longer before you need to regenerate that catalyst. So um, regardless uh, of whether this comes out in time to help with the supply shortage, um, it's definitely a huge step forward in technology for creating propylene and polypropylene derivatives. Yeah, for sure. I believe the story indicated that they're still in the research stage, so I'm not sure how long these uh, development stages last. Um, could be a while, could be quick, but I think it's still in the process of being researched and hopefully developed soon. All right, moving on to a story from a team out of MIT, um, and this is in regarding regarding uh, uh, seed coatings. Um, that team is in the process of developing a new seed coating from pectin and carboxymethylcellulose, which are both obviously readily readily available. It's biodegradable, natural, uh, food safe polymers, um, and it's for a seed coating. Um, obviously, during uh, tough climate change years where you know you're seeing more and more crops be stressed by drought these seed coatings become more and more important because they can retain water so similar to what to the way you know chia seeds form a natural coating and swells into a gel when they get wet um, this this type of seed coating is supposed to mimic that and basically allow crops to grow much better, uh, deeper roots, better leaves. Um, so pretty cool technology coming out of MIT. That's cool. Maybe, maybe they'll help my lawn. I'm not sure if that's the problem. <laughs> it's been a rough summer. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the Camores company. So they've um, they had a groundbreaking ceremony. They've opened a $93 million mining facility in Florida. And the cool thing here is um, the project uses a technology uh, called mobile mining units, um, which uh, greatly reduces the need for traditional uh, dredging, which is a very difficult on the ecology and an environment. And uh, so this this is a pretty cool step forward. Uh, all of that, the mining uh, to develop and, and access more um, 
minerals for their uh, type here TIO2 business. So very cool. Yeah, mining titanium and zircon, but obviously they're a major player in TIO2. All right, more recently in the uh, farming sector, going on to mergers and acquisition discussion, uh, there's been a slew of activity, um, companies that are acquiring, acquiring other small companies, and I'll just kind of go through them quickly. Uh, Philip Morris has announced plans to acquire Vector Group. Uh, they're a company that specializes in inhaled drug delivery solutions. Eli Lilly uh, recently acquired Protomer Technologies, uh, a firm with a protein engineering platform. WCG is acquiring Intrinsic Imaging. They offer medical imaging and core lab services. Uh, contract development and manufacturing organization Curia is acquiring formulation, fill integrity, bio and lake pharma. And finally, Wasana Health is acquiring SciTech and Al Alterola Biotech. Wow. Yeah, not only was that a mouthful, that was a lot of <laughs> acquisitions. <laughs> a lot of money changing hands. It was a busy week. <laughs> All right, and I've got a, uh, a quick story. So Verdant, Verdant Specialty Solutions, which was formerly part of Salve, has acquired DeForest and Paraflow Energy Solutions from Chemical Services Group, which was a privately held chemicals company. Um, the terms of the transaction were not disclosed, so I'm not sure um, what the value of that was. Um, but, you know, this is another one on the heels of our last report about the increase in mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, this wasn't very long ago that this business was spun off from Solve, so they got right to work on their growth strategy. Yeah. All right, and in our final story for, for the day, SI Group is announcing plans uh, to sell a majority of its industrial resins business to ASK Chemicals. Um, and that is a, a portfolio company um, owned by a private equity firm, Roan Group. And I believe this excludes uh, their business, the SI Group business in the US and China and it's just the rest of the world that they're selling off to ASK Chemicals. Um, they had production facilities in Brazil, India, and South Africa. So interesting uh, sell-off here. And I believe, I don't know much about ASK Chemicals, um, Rick, if you do, feel free to chime in, but the story indicates they're, they're more involved in, in foundry materials. Yep, and uh, so which makes some sense. Uh, because with foundry materials, you're looking to make binders, things like that to hold the materials together. So that makes some sense. All right. And that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We'll return next week with a fresh batch of Industry Reactions. Until then, stay safe. Take care. <laughs>